This is 33% Pulp, squeezing the most out of one third of a book. We review books with covers that make you wonder how it made it to print. I'm Amber. That's Daniel. Hello. And that's Lindsay. Hi. This is the first episode of our three-part recap of the book Night of the Crabs by Guy Smith. Disclaimer, spoilers are ahead for this book if you are planning on reading it. But first, let me give you a little background on what we're reading, right? This was a book um, written by Guy Newman Smith, um, who is a actually very prolific English writer, best known for his pulp fiction-style horror fiction. Um Though he has also written nonfiction, softcore pornography, knew it. and children's literature. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's literally cut and pasted from Wikipedia. <gasps> so, all, all of what I'm reading right now is plagiarism. PS. Okay. So, okay, so, um, please don't tell my story. <laughs> the Penguin Encyclopedia... <laughs> the Penguin Encyclopedia of Horror and the Supernatural considers Smith's horror novels endearing, imbued with lively storytelling and the tacky brilliance of the horror and science fiction cinema of the 1950s. His most recent book, Carnage, was published in September 2016. Is that a children's so real... book? Or... <laughs> 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 you know, I don't know. <laughs> you can't tell with this yeah. guy. He's just very prolific. All over the place. <laughs> um, it was Night of the Crabs, though, that really established him as a writer. It was a number one beach read mm. in the summer of 1976. Okay. It saw numerous reprints and spawned six sequels, along with sev several short stories and a movie called Island Claws, <gasps> released in 1980, starring Robert Lansing and Steve Hanks. So not Tom Hanks, but <laughs> Steve his, Hanks. Cousin, his cousin <laughs> Steve. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there was actually recent, somewhat recent talk in 2012 of like making a new adaptation oh my of gosh. this. But according to an interview, doo -doo 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 -doo, he said that he thinks Night of the Crabs fell by the wayside because the film company wanted to make it as like a blockbuster movie rather than a B movie, and that it, it would have been too expensive mm. because of you know King Crab yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I'll also add just briefly that he has a super dedicated and devoted following. They have an annual convention. What? Whoa. And they m m meet to just honor and celebrate uh, his work. The one this, this year was September 3rd. We just missed it. Um, <laughs> Sad yeah, we story. just missed it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, um, we always do touch a little bit reviews. So there's, it's 3.3. .3 out of five okay. stars based on 460 ratings Whoa. on Goodreads. Huh. Yeah. The top rated review was written by Steven and hmm. begins with what he calls a few preliminaries. So number one, this book is called Night of the Crabs. Number two, this book is not called A Meaningful Exploration into the Depth and Meaning of Classic American <laughs> Literature. <laughs> number three this book's cover shows a giganto ill-tempered crabosaurus <laughs> sporting a stool dropping don't come hither look in its glowing red eyes and four the publishers of this book chose for its marketing tagline to be in the rich in the tradition of rats oh. so basically i mean <laughs> it's just you know what are you gonna do <laughs> steven's pretty like, spot on there yeah uh, he's he, steven doesn't lie yeah. you know so the crab series, okay, it begins with Night of the Crabs, second book, mm -hmm. Killer Crabs, then The Origin of the Crabs, mm -hmm. then Crabs on the Rampage, <laughs> followed by Crabs Moon, <laughs> followed by Crabs, The Human Sacrifice, <laughs> then Killer Crabs, The Return. Okay. Then, in 2015, there was The Crabs Omnibus, which is a short stories collection, including titles such as Crustacean Vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> the decoy, the crabs, and crabs armada. Crabs. There you go. Wow. I mean, let's are. just get this out of the way. Do, do we think that Guy Smith? Of course, it was a he. He was like, I'm writing about crabs, and there's a uh, double meaning there. He knew that, right? Yeah. There's no way. What's actually <laughs> interesting is there's an interview that he gave that um, someone said, "Was this like part of the larger eco horror?" Um, uh, genre that was out in like the oh. 1970s uh -huh. so referencing for example Jaws right, oh. right. yeah 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 um, he said absolutely oh okay, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think he's a pretty like independent thinking <laughs> he's genius, a funny guy you know? okay right. 
Yeah. Highly well, successful. cool. That definitely helps set the stage for the first third, which I am uh, really excited to recap. And uh, I have a lot of questions about what happens next that um, hopefully you guys will answer. Uh, do you want me to just go ahead and dive right in then? Go ahead. All right. So chapter one, uh, we open on the beautiful Welsh coast. We've got a young couple in their early 20s, Ian Wright and um, Julie Coles. They are engaged <laughs> and they um, are just taking a, like a week-long trip uh, on the Welsh coast and they're driving around in uh, Ian's 1949 Red MG as it glides along the narrow coast roads. Yeah. Uh, They're having a lovely time. They're smiling at each other. You know, she's like, Penny for your thoughts. And, you know, he smiles back. And uh, uh, so they're... (laughs) Those are his thoughts. thoughts. Wait, did you say that... Did you say that it was a 1949 car? Yeah, 1949. So, Yeah, he's got a a taste in cars. That would be like driving like a 1990 car today. (laughs) But like, uh, maybe, but like, maybe it's like a really nice, I think it's a nice car that I also don't know. I've sat in one before. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Damn, I've sat in one. All right. Um, So, yeah. So they're like, you know, uh, Ian's like, I would love to stay here forever. And Julie's like, well, we can't. Your Uncle Cliff is going to get really mad if we're late, you know, back at work on Monday. Uh, Uncle Uncle Cliff is a, yeah, he's a botanist. Um, No, he's not. (laughs) Is that what he does? Wait. <laughs> yes, he is. Are you are you talking about Cliff Davenport? Yes, he's a botanist. He's a, he's a marine biologist. What? Okay, he he's a he's a marine All biologist. I know is that he's a professor. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's uh, called yeah. Professor Davenport. Okay, well, all right. So he does. He's he's got like lots of okay. freaking skills. Yeah, yeah no, oh, he yeah. knows yeah. a lot of things. Um, but botany, I think you know, ocean botany definitely was like a specialty, but definitely. He's a botanist in here. Anyway, um, so, but they work in the lab with him. Uh, and and uh, Ian's like, you're right, we got to get back to work. But Cliff's, you know, he's almost like a brother to me. And, and I'm quoting here. And he's hip, too, to quote a modern phrase. He didn't even raise an <laughs> he didn't even raise an eyebrow when he discovered that we were going away together for a week. Have a good dirty week, he said as I left oh, on Friday oh my night. God. Yeah. So so right, wait, this is his this uncle? is his uncle. So right off the bat, we're establishing this like weird pervy uncle. Yeah, who's like, go get him, Tiger. You know, um, even though they're just engaged and not quite married. Um, uh, but they, you know. They have already consummated their relationship on this trip, and uh, Ian is, you know, excited to do it again. (laughs) Uh, So they're driving out to the swim to uh, Shell Island, which is supposed to be great for bathing, as they say in Wales. Uh, Also, Shell Shell Island is not really an island. Did you look it up? It's like, yep, I did, and I did like distances between all these places. Shell Island is definitely the opposite of an island. What? It's, it's like on the coast okay. but it's not an island. <laughs> it's not. <okay. laughs> well, anyway, they're anyway. trying to get there. Um, and so they're driving to Shell Island and uh, they pass this like creepy looking um, like concrete buildings with grass runways. And it's all surrounded by um, by uh, barbed wire fence. And it looks kind of, they say it looks like some concentration camp. And Julie's like, ooh, that's creepy. You know, what is that? And Ian goes, that's the war department. But uh, Uncle Cliff told me about it, but we don't have to worry about that place. And I put a little note here, foreshadowing, because I think (laughs) we'll have to worry about that place. (laughs) Anyway, so we get to Shell Island. Um and they decide to go swimming. The, the water's nice and warm. And, and Julie's like, let's go swim um, all the way out there. Uh, a nice long swim. And Ian goes, suits me. Ian glanced down at the front of his bathing costume. Julie, Julie always made him feel like that. Damn her. Hold on. Let me reread that. Yeah, I think because you were cutting out at like crucial. Oh, parts no. Of what you OK. Were just saying, I think. Uh, so, so Julie's like, let's go for a nice long swim. And Ian goes, suits me. And then I'm going to read a little bit here. Ian glanced down at the front of his bathing costume. Julie always made him like that, damn her. He thought of stripping off, showing her what she had seen in the bedroom only last night. Why the hell shouldn't he? 
So there wasn't a soul about. All the same, somebody saw it might last night. Yeah, all the same, somebody might have a pair of field glasses, and the watcher might be prudish as well as being a busybody and report him. And he thought of all the publicity, so he decided not. So basically, Julie's like, "Let's go for a swim." Ian's like, "Well, got a boner. <laughs> I would like to, sh- I would like to show it to her, uh, but I guess now's not, not the right time." Yeah. Um, so then. Uh, they start swimming and Julie, they're both very strong swimmers. Julie's like, let's race. And, uh, she starts swimming off and he's trying to catch up to her. Um, and like, you know, they're kind of like going in between waves. Um, and he loses sight of her. And at some point, I mean, this is just like a page later from having a boner. He goes, stupid bitch. He gasped aloud. You'll be too far out. Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know. What the fuck? He calls her a stupid bitch for swimming far okay. anyway and they're getting the, married got it okay good yeah yeah so i don't know about this ian fella um but that won't really matter uh yeah. because uh then he sees her again and then he gets another boner uh <laughs> a faint stirring down in his bathing costume told told him that things were back to normal um so that's two boners in chapter one alone <laughs> Uh, then he hears a a shrill scream and, uh, immediately Julie's gone. He's, he's yelling for her. He doesn't see her. She was gone. Uh, he, then he realizes that like, even though they're, they've swum really far out, he can touch the bottom of the, of the ocean with his feet. So he, uh, puts his feet down and he's kind of standing, um, on this shallow, uh, and he spies a large ripple between the waves heading towards him. And he's like, what a stupid trick. That was Jewel. She, she screamed to scare him. And now she's swimming towards him underwater. Uh, guess what, guys? It wasn't Julie. It's definitely not it's Julie. Not <laughs> it's definitely not Julie. <laughs> he staggers back, his own piercing scream muffled by the water as his head went under. He fought to free himself from whatever it was that could have a hold on his leg. Um, he could only compare it to a pair of garden shears with serrated blades biting deeper into the bone with every second. Uh, he falls Mm. down. He's, you know, gulping water. He sees like a red mist before his eyes. Then he tastes it and he's like, uh, that's my blood. Um, (laughs) then he realizes that he's free. Well, how self-centered? Cause like it totally could have been Julie's blood. (laughs) Right? No. And he's like, uh, Julie's dead. That's my blood. Uh, then he, um, He's free for a moment, and he's like, oh, thank God. But then he realizes it's because his leg is gone. Uh. It's been chopped off. Yeah. Uh, Unconsciousness saved him from realizing that he right leg was also being amputated. So. Wait. What? Okay. So he was unconscious? He, he, like, loses consciousness as his right leg is being amputated. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I'm sorry. Okay, got it. And that is the end of Ian and Julie. (laughs) Uh, Cut to Cliff Davenport back in his laboratory on Monday morning. He's waiting for Ian and Julie. They don't show up by lunch. He's like, I am starting to get worried. Um, At first, I was just thinking that they were, like, fooling around staying late so they could fool around which is something that you know clearly he likes thinking about as as ian's uncle um (laughs) we also learn a little bit about cliff at this point um he's about 40 um yeah he's a botanist maybe he changes professions later in the book but right now he's a botanist um his his wife had died earlier uh in the year maybe Uh. so he's a he's a widower Anyway, he's sitting there at work. He's like, I think something's wrong um, when a couple of police officers come and knock on the door. And uh, he's like, okay, you know, I knew something had happened. The officer's like, we have some really bad news. We found uh, your nephew's MG. Um, we also saw, found some clothing in it. And we think that your nephew and his fiance. Uh, went swimming and they got lost at sea and cliff's like there's no way like they were really great swimmers Hmm. and i you know you have to keep looking for them so uh but the the um policemen you know just kind of let him let him go uh or they leave the house you know and cliff spends the next three days just like waiting for a call from the police he uh 
he's not eating, he's not sleeping, he's just like overcome with grief. You know, first his wife, now these, now these two. Um, a week late, a week passes. He keeps calling for for more news, and there isn't any. Um, a week passes, and he's like, "I got to take matters into my own hands." And so he <laughs> drives out to uh, the Welsh coast. He comes into a. Uh, we're now on chapter two. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> In chapter, the, I know. That's, well, that's, you know, he thought the. I like that. Hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I think that it's um. That was a lot of information for one chapter. I mean, compared to what I read, like it's a hefty chapter. The okay. rest of them go a bit quicker than that. Okay. Okay. Um, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, not good. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, Is it over yet? So chapter... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've got four more chapters, guys, so buckle in. Uh, so chapter two, uh, he decides, I'm going to go out there and, you know, investigate myself. Um, he goes to the police office there locally, and he's like, you guys aren't doing your job. I'm going to do it for you. Uh, he's not making friends with the police officers at this point. Um, he goes out to Shell Island, where, you know, the scene of the mystery. Um, the island, not he island. Walks, <laughs> yeah, the non-island. Um, he walks out on low tide, and he spots um, these huge, like, scratch marks in the sand, these huge track marks. And he's like, what could have possibly caused that? It looks like... I don't know, a crab, but a hundred times bigger. Uh, which, like, given the title, you already read the title of the book. We obviously know that it's crabs that are a hundred yeah, times bigger. Yeah, ta- but he- Professor Cliff Davenport hasn't. <laughs> you know? He hasn't. You're right. You're right. Also, wait, why, um, why, is did, did, this, why aren't these marks in the sand washed away yet? What is well, it's low tide, but then as like as he's thinking, like God, these look like sheep-sized crabs. The tide starts to roll in and covers them up. Yeah. So then he's like, mm. "Am I going crazy? You know, I, there's a lot going on emotionally for me. Maybe I, I should have grabbed a picture, but I didn't. Maybe I saw something." Um, he decides. Oh, he sees that there are some like pilotless aircraft flying overhead, and he's like, "Maybe." I don't know, maybe some of the landing gear caused this. So he decides to go and like scope out the, um, the war department buildings and just like, t- you know, he has his binoculars and he's like hiding in the grasses and he's looking at the, uh, the aircraft that are parked there thinking like, you know, maybe they have some weird landing gear, but he looks and he's like, no, those are just regular, like small airplanes. And while he's looking, uh, a security guard or somebody with a gun comes up and is like, stand up. Uh, he's captured. Uh, Wait, I'm yeah. Cliff Davenport was captured. Yeah. Cliff Davenport is captured. Um, even though he was by the army people. Yeah. By, by the people who were like, okay. Secu- like patrolling the the area around the building, which he knew was is this like huh, Baywatch or military? This is like um, I'm actually not sure. I know that they have huh. weapons. I guess Baywatch people wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're they're they don't part usually of the carry war guns and they're some shorts. Or they're, yeah, they're, <laughs> I don't remember their being weapons. detained people. <laughs> <laughs> so no. So to answer your question, no, it's not like Baywatch. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Hoff is not there on the beach. Yeah. Um, so the end of chapter two, he gets captured and they take him into uh, into the War Department building and they throw him into um, a windowless room, like a concrete windowless room. One moment. Finding my notes. Okay. Chapter three, he's sitting in the room alone. Um, like a lot of time passes. It's really dark. He can't see anything. He can't hear anything. He feels like he's kind of going crazy when all of a sudden um, somebody, you know, like somebody like barges into the room and is like, come with me. And they escort him into a bigger room with a table where a big bald guy is sitting across from it, the interrogator. Um, the interrogator's like, what were you doing? And Cliff is like, Okay, I probably shouldn't tell him that um, 
I saw like giant crab marks in the sand <laughs> right. because he thinks that'll make him sound crazy <laughs> and then they'll commit him to an asylum. Um, and so he makes up this story on the spot. He's like, I was just wondering if your planes could help me find Ian and Julie who went missing. And the interrogator's like, who I've not heard of them. Um, and so, you know, Cliff. Yeah. I mean, huh? Ian, Ian and Julie, his names are not very specific, no. you know, like, I don't fucking know an Ian or Julie, you know, like, true, I don't, but know. you think we would think that everybody on this, like, on this coast would have heard of the couple that had gone missing, right? It's been a week, you'd think they would have talked. Anyway, the interrogator hadn't heard of it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I put a little note I have there some that population like, stats. Hmm. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> this is not a very big dive. Oh, no, all. you don't want to dive in with population stats now? Which... No, uh, no, we can do that later. But I mean, like, th- let's just say it's very small, which I guess actually goes against my point that, like, the smaller it is, you would you think- would know Ian and Julie, yeah, yeah, faster yeah. the word would travel. So, anyway, I'll, I guess that was all to say. I think maybe um, this interrogator, uh, whose name I laid out later found out was Myers Cough. Um, I don't know if he appears again. I think maybe he did. Know I don't know this name about Ian and Julie. That's all. That's all I'm <gasps> saying. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Yes. So, Daniel, do you know this I name? Do not, Myers Cough? Okay. Okay. I don't know this name either. All right. So. Well, never mind then. Huh. Anyway, oh uh, <laughs> Cliff gets alert. interrogated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could just cut that whole section, actually. Um, he gets interrogated a little while longer. Um, Myers Cough says, I need to see your ID. And Cliff's like, I don't have it, but you can call Sir Ronald Bradley of Whitehall. He's my friend. Uh- did, did Sir Ronald Bradley of Whitehall come up again? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> but I can say Cliff Davenport is very <laughs> Well, that I can see. I can see that. Anyway, Cliff is set free. He goes back to the hotel where he actually knows the hotel owner. Um, and the hotel owner uh, is serving dinner. It's a very small, you know, in type thing. And uh, she's serving dinner to the guests. And she's like, oh. Is this... Hmm? Is this Mrs. Jones? It's not. Oh, yes, it is Mrs. Jones. You're right. Yes. She's great. She does seem really (laughs) sweet. Um, So Mrs. Jones is like, you know, it's very full here tonight, Cliff, but um, you can take a seat here next next to Mrs. Benson. Her husband just left her. I think you two will really enjoy each other's company. (laughs) I think you two would get along just splendidly. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Wait, when you say just left? Like last year. <laughs> not like not like he oh, got up to go okay. to the bathroom. Here, have a seat. <laughs> okay, cuz like I I know Pat Benson. Yes, and, you do. Yeah. Um Yeah. I it was unclear to me how long ago her husband. I think a year ago. Cuz she's okay. at the inn right now, um trying to like restart her life. Um and so, so she's had enough time to grieve. She's like, you know, I need to do a hard reset here at the Welsh coast. So, so, uh, Mrs. Jones is like, I'm sure you'll like her. And Cliff's like, I'm sure I will. His eyes were already on the dark haired petite girl who sipped tomato juice, which is a weird, um, dinner beverage, I feel That's like, you. but maybe not in Wales. Uh, she had a wistful expression on her face. She was wearing a cotton blouse above a tartan skirt and he saw the outline of her small, firm breasts. It wasn't often these Dang. things. These it wasn't often these days he noticed such things. He put her age at about twenty five, so she's twenty five. She's got small, firm breasts, and um, he's basically in love. Because uh, he sits down, they start chatting. Um, they feel very relaxed. Uh, he's she's like, "Why are you here?" And he's like, "Well, my nephew and his fiance went missing." And she's like, "Oh my gosh, I heard about them." Uh, and he, you know, he just feels so comfortable around her. He's like, "Also, this really weird thing happened today. I was out at the coast and I saw these like giant, like crab marks in the sand." And she was like, "Oh my god, I saw them too." She Yay. puts her hand on his hand, and. The rest is history. Uh, 
<laughs> they so they decide to um tomorrow go out and like scope out the area the two of them do a bit of investigating and he's like yes let's go bathing and then he's like no 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 wait um there's giant killer crabs um let's actually just do the <laughs> scoping out what <laughs> um, <laughs> i thought that was, i don't know <laughs> <a little> <laughs> he was he he, huh. he didn't know about the killer crabs though. he did he just said yeah he didn't he did no i mean he thought that there were giant sheep-sized crabs out there According to the mark, Amber. Let me just ask you. Let me just ask you yeah. a quick question. Do you know who King Crab yes, is? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. <laughs> I get that. That's the end of chapter five for me. Okay. So, um, so anyway, they decide to go out tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, he's like, Let, yeah, let's go out. Let's go bathing together. And then he's like, no, no, no. We better keep clear of the water because it seems too dangerous, which I thought was like a weird oversight. But it actually is quite fitting in with Cliff's personality, which I found to be opportunistic when it came to matters of the opposite sex. Um, so, uh, that is, um, the end of chapter four. They sat down and made a start on their respective melons. Melons? Melons. 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 I guess in Wales, you drink tomato juice and eat melons for dinner. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, my sorry. gosh. I, what? I, I got it wrong. They were eating that tomorrow morning. Oh. That's breakfast. In the morning, oh, okay. they, they ate some melons. Um, and they, they, they look at the newspaper sitting at the table next to them. And the headline says, bathers missing off the Welsh coast. And they see that there are five more people that have gone messing, missing. Missing. And yeah, and Cliff uh -oh. is like, the crabs are attacking. So, okay, at this point, he's certain that they're crabs. See, I don't know. He says that, but then he also, as you'll find out in chapter four and five, is like, you know what? It's probably nothing, actually. But that's when he's like <laughs> trying to get into her pants. So, so it's either it's crabs, crabs or, nothing? or, like or maybe um, another character who I'll introduce you to here shortly. Um, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Oh, you know Bartholomew. Okay, I great. I don't know Bartholomew. Because I wanted to know what happened I, to him. Uh, well, I know <laughs> what happened, but yeah, I wanted to know. More. I know what happened. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, chapter four, they are walking to Shell Island hand in hand because, you know, now they're in love and <laughs> um, there's just nothing more romantic <laughs> than looking for your dead nephew and uh, uh, his fiance. fiance. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, he's like, how long are you going to be here? And she's like, mm, it depends. Uh, or no, he, <laughs> she asked that. And then and then she's like, how long? Or I, Let me start over. She asked, how long are you going to be here? And he's like, depends. You know, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to be here a fortnight, but it also depends. Um, so he smiles and puts his arm around her um, and he gets another boner. <laughs> I wonder if Mrs. Benson is like super wealthy i mean when i say mrs but pat I mean, benson pat, yeah you know because how long has she been at mrs jones's place you know and then she's gonna stay another fortnight two weeks. Yeah. like how can she be like affording this she must be independently to, like, wealthy yeah 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 okay good to yeah. know all right um so they uh see some helicopters overhead and uh and you know, Cliff's like, hmm, I guess I just have a feeling that, that those helicopters in the war department are somehow connected to the, to this, you know, incident. Um, and, uh, they are walking along and then once again, they spot the marks. It's low tide. They, and, and, uh, Cliff's like, you know what? It's crabs. All right. It's definitely crabs. There's a, about a hundred of them and they're as big as sheep. And Pat's like, well, how how has no one seen these before? Like, it's crazy that they're the first ones to spot these crabs, you know, or the, or these uh, crab lines. And Cliff, um, Cliff goes for two reasons, I should say. And then he pauses and pauses and slowly fills his pipe with tobacco. Uh, firstly, as I've already oh. mentioned, he, oh really? <laughs> um, Guy Smith is um, an avid tobacco smoker, oh. and he won a pipe smoking competition. What the fuck is a point. pipe smoking? Competition? How can you compete that? <laughs> Who I, gets cancer he first? won. <laughs> Look, he won. All right, you can't take that away from me. Right, you're right. Don't. I shouldn't even question it. Don't try. Um. So he's Wikipedia said. <laughs> so they're standing out there on the low tide, and Cliff's like, "I have time to, um, you know, smoke a." 
smoke my pipe. So firstly, as I've already mentioned, <laughs> they've only just appeared on this part of the coast. Secondly, they move and feed at night, particularly when there's a full moon, which I was like, how, when there's a full how moon. does Cliff know this? He doesn't. That's the thing. Because he's a, he's a marine biologist. No, he's a botanist, first of all. Second of all, he doesn't even know that they are crabs. And now he's like, well. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, he's like, the well, thing. they just appeared, yeah. first of all. And second of all, they only feed at night. Like, Shut up, Cliff. I did some crab research. Did you? And, <laughs> oh, do all yeah, crabs? A, just a little bit. And from what I recall from my research is crabs do like only come out at night. Okay. Wait, that doesn't make sense. I've seen, I've seen crabs, crabs in the daytime. Day. But do they feed? Just ignore they what I said. Don't <laughs> cut what I said. I was wondering what I said. Okay, but I was don't also don't wondering. Don't let my students hear this. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, so th- at that point, Cliff's like, well, I'm coming back at night and I'm just going to set up in these sand dunes over here with my binoculars and I'm going to watch out for the crabs. Uh, and and Pat's like, well, I'm coming with you. And he's like, now look here. And he grasps her by the shoulders. <laughs> this is no job for a woman. These creatures have already claimed several lives already. They're deadly dangerous. The risks, dot, dot, dot. And then she's like, I'm coming. So uh, I will say Pat is very... Um dedicated to not being alone that's true that is true she does not like to be alone yeah um so they are standing there and and he's like fine okay you can come uh and they uh cliff wheels around and about 200 yards away they see a man following the tide line heading towards them but he's he's loping his he's shambling his body seems like twisted and deformed from the waist down he's like he's in like a torn shirt and jeans um with bare feet he's got matted hair uh a long beard um he's got like a weird face uh with broken teeth and uh they're just like whoa like who is this guy (laughs) (laughs) he's like grunting and wheezing and he's like (sighs) you know going past them and he looks at them but he doesn't make any like he doesn't acknowledge their existence and they just kind of stand there and watch him and they're like Okay. What the um, fuck? Yeah, just some weird guy. So um, they go sit on the sand dunes. Wait, they were. Ret- Hold on. Uh, okay, so they go and sit on the sand dunes for a while, and his his arms around her. Um, there was a stirring in his loins, <laughs> and his heart was beating faster. Yeah, so it's just like boner after boner out here. Um, He's like, you see that guy who basically looked like a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> Did that... Did that do something for you? I don't, I don't know what's on your mind. Did that but... happen to uh, turn you on as much as it turned me on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much, I don't think, for Cliff or his, or his nephew, Ian. Um runs in the family yeah so uh they actually kiss he goes to, he leans in to kiss her she kisses him back her nails dig into um his back which i thought was pretty intense for a first kiss um, <laughs> and then they they gaze at each other and he doesn't like feel weird that she clawed him but that's fine um they kiss again uh then he t- touches her delightful breasts but uh, he doesn't want to go any further. His loins are fully charged with emotion. Emotion. Did you know that's where emotion? I did make a. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, I'll just put a little foreshadowing note yeah. here too, though. Yeah. That oh, and and it references back to Ian, right? Oh, like that's where their emotions are. Is that where your emotions uh, are? Daniel? That is not where my emotions are. <laughs> He's like, as a psychiatrist, um, I know that that's not where my... I mean, (laughs) some emotions can come from things that happen to to that. Sure, yeah, yeah. It can be connected, but anyway, his were full of emotions. Um, That's not all they were. His loins. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So they go back to lunch at the inn. (laughs) I'm sorry, wait, no. they left the beach? Yeah, so then now they leave the beach. Um, they go back to lunch. Uh, and they ask Mrs. Jones, who's this funny character that we saw. And Mrs. Jones is like, oh, that's Bartholomew. He's deaf and he's dumb and he's stupid. Um, oh. But he's harmless. He's been here for three years. Uh, okay. 
It, that's all. That's all I know about Bartholomew. She seems to have like a look about her that I can't quite place. So maybe I'll find out some more about Bartholomew and Mrs. Jones in the future. Likely not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that night they they follow through with their plan to go scope out the crabs. Uh, they walk to Shell Island. Um, you know, <laughs> they're commenting things like, it's so beautiful out here. Too bad we have to worry about crabs. And then they kiss. Oh. Uh, and then, Wait, this is. I'm sorry because yeah. I was not oh, listening, okay. and that's my bad. No, that's all right. This is this is Cliff Davenport and Pat Benson. Yes, again, right. That night they're going out okay, to Shell good. Island to scope okay. out the crabs. They're commenting on how okay. beautiful it is out, and uh, you know, Pat's like, "It's so beautiful out. Too bad we have to worry about crabs." And Cliff kisses her, and he says, uh, "You know, it's probably just Bartholomew." Like, it, it, like, don't worry about you know all the evidence that we've seen to to indicate that there are giant crabs out there. It's probably just Bart, that guy. Um, so, you know, he's gone from like declaring that the crabs are loose and that he knows uh, all these things about crabs to like, there are no crabs. Don't worry about it. But that's he's obviously he, preoccupied I think, was, with something else. I think he's a little preoccupied. I think he has some other plans for the evening. So wow. chapter five, uh, this one is pretty quick. A lot happens in it. Um, they settle into the sand dune. Um, and immediately she's like kissing him and groping him. He gets another boner. Uh-huh. Thank goodness this time though, they have sex. Oh, Sandy yeah. Crotch. Oh, I knew that. Did you? Knew this. They go on. They, yeah, this comes up. Again. <laughs> Good. I wonder, I hoped I wasn't the only one to have a sex scene. Um, Daniel, did you know that they are having I mean, sex? I did, but not in so many words. Oh, okay. You didn't have like a full-on sex scene. My yeah, no, they are just no, having no, no sex scenes. Of mine. Yeah, oh, I got sorry. the I got the cold end of the book. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very <laughs> underwhelming. <laughs> cold, emotionally distant. Never hugged you as a child. <laughs> very sad. Do you want me to read the sex scene? It's like. A couple pages. I don't know. Are we? Or I can just. (laughs) Well, you you're asking us because I presume that you think it's worth it. I did highlight it. (laughs) I'll read it. I'll read it. We can always cut some, right? Yeah, you can always cut some. And also, I just heads up. I have a very interestingly worded. Oh, okay. Well, then let's compare. So, yeah, we can see as we go. Okay. And and you can always edit it out, like you said. I haven't done this for a long time, Pat breathed, feeling at the hardness <laughs> at his hardness through his trousers. His hands came from behind her and traveled slowly up the inside of her sweater until they reached the clasp of her bra, unfastening it with an expertise he had almost forgotten, and then feeling the tenderness of her swelling nipples. She moaned softly with delight, then lay back with her eyes closed. Her fingers were active, though. Cliff felt that thrilling sensation of his zip being pulled down, her fingers groping inside the open vent, and then the coolness of the night air on his warm moistness. Ugh, Can I just say it's odd moistness. that, like, okay, yeah, I know, the it's vent, so what? The vent, z- yes. the zip and the vent, like, it's, like, not actually his body, it's, like, his clothes. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay, um, it's odd. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot of clothing in here, bra clasps and zips and vents. Um, anyway, but then we get to the coolness of the night air on his warm, warm moistness, which. Does that mean that he's pre coming? That's what I'm wondering. Like, dicks <laughs> usually aren't moist until. Let's all keep track. I'm curious about this, actually. Okay. Let's all keep track and see if there's any reference to the actual penis. <laughs> okay. There, I think there is. Uh, let okay, me keep reading. <laughs> um, to oh, the actual. <laughs> Let's investigate whether there's actual reference to the piss. Yeah, it, it I makes want an appearance. Real meat. Uh, <laughs> real meat, Jesus. He gasped with pleasure. Pat Benson certainly knew what she was doing. Their lips met again, oh. tongues probing and entwining. Both of them were experiencing the awakening of something which had lain dormant in them for so long. Rapidly, they were getting out of control. Nothing else mattered. Not even the giant crabs. Exclamation point. (laughs) Uh, Cliff withdrew his his left hand from the warmth of Pat's sweater and felt for the fastener on her jeans. Then he pulled her zip down and she lifted herself up slightly off the ground so he could unclothe her. Which I kind of liked that he acknowledged that, that like women have to move their bodies around. Well, anybody getting their clothes off has to move their bodies around in like awkward ways. 
you know, jeans just don't like fall off your body. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, the whiteness of her thighs was in itself seductive in the soft moonlight, the darker triangle of soft, fluffy hair between them seeming to withhold secrets from him. Secrets of men who had lain there, men who had been sexually satisfied beyond their wildest dreams, and of one man the who bed, had walked away like, in with- preference for another woman. What? What? He's like, he's, he's like, like ooh, her pubes. Yeah. <laughs> That's where his mind goes. He's like, mm, Think about all secrets, the other men secrets she- of other men, <laughs> her ex-husband. Oh he's fucking God. bisexual. <laughs> Wow. I mean, he yeah, was I mean, really excited about his nephew getting it on, too. God. Well, that was just pervy, though. <laughs> yeah. That's... There's a line. Anyway. Wow, yeah. So uh, Cliff rolls between her open legs. She still had a grip on his hardness, and now she was guiding it down to where she wanted it, bathing it. F- Again, mm-hmm. it's hardness. It's not an actual... I mean, what are you expecting? Member? <laughs> She's like, no, I want the word. Question. Sometimes they call it like, okay. yeah, I guess, I guess I just like, instead of like, adjectives yeah. or like, you know, I'm just thinking like, call it something. Yeah, yeah, you you're know, right. Like, Cock. you know, or like <laughs> reference it's the humanness of it rather than like some the qualities yeah. of it. Right. Yeah. And so I think that it's interesting because weren't her breasts like perky or whatever? They were, so he, yeah, the like, tenderness of her swelling nipples. Yeah, so he's so it's okay to talk about her nipples, but like it's his hardness yeah. and the vent and the, <laughs> the vent whatever that comes out of it. So it's, <laughs> the vent, yeah. yeah, it's just <laughs> the moist, and then it's moist, but it's like it's like one of those like alien predator like fucking things. Uh, the thing opens and the other thing comes uh, out. Which is it's a fucking stomach burster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, she grips on it. <laughs> <laughs> she guides it down to where she wanted it, bathing it first in her warm river of desire, and then sliding it down further until it disappeared inch by inch into her. Her mm. warm um, wait, can you read her warm what? Her warm river of desire. Okay. Which I actually don't know what that is. is like, she, did so she she's pee guiding on it first. <laughs> yeah. I was like <laughs> oh, you're right. Because she's already guiding it down, she's not gonna then give him a blowjob and then continue guiding like that's in opposite direction that's a river up. river she bathes she Whoa. bathes it first in her warm river of desire and then slides it down for maybe she has a moist belly button that's on the way oh my god that's horrible don't say that <laughs> <laughs> a moist belly button. can you imagine no, no i can't you'd have to have like a whole you'd have to have like maxi pads yeah, for that'd your be so Anyway, no. Sorry. All right. Anyway, let's, I'm let's almost done. <laughs> Jeez, I, I, you know what else I was thinking what? is like, watch me and when I like go through my sex scene and it's like his fucking cock <laughs> was so fucking. His man flesh was like throbbing manhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's gonna that's gonna be funny if it's like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming it's not though. That'd be weird. Change no, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, anyway, um. They, uh, I, I'll just get through the last part quickly. They, they convulse in a violent eruption, um, and then they, they part and adjust their clothing. He says, "I'm more than glad I let you come with me tonight." He whispered as he zipped himself up, <laughs> up again. What a fucking asshole! I'm afraid though Jesus. that we must still keep an eye out for those crabs. No, when they say crabs, <laughs> do they mean? I know. I don't know, but. I was thinking that the whole time. Me too. I was like, kind of like, that's silly. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Mm. Uh, but anyway, now that they've had sex, he's like, well, now there's crabs. <laughs> Before they had sex, he was like, no, it's probably just Bart. Uh, anyway, what do you want to make out? Wow. And now he's like, yeah. that's crabs. Um, uh, what? God, I would just be like, you're a horrible person. No, right? I don't even know who you are. That's anymore. what I would feel. But she's in lo- I think she's she in know him at all. He is. I know. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> um so anyway so now they're watching um along the shore and cliff sees some movement and he's like oh my god and uh you know he points pat in that direction and they're like ah, ah. it's bart okay it's bartholomew um yep. he's just dragging himself around in the moonlight he's grunting picking up stuff from the seaweed um sometimes he walks on all fours which is really confusing for them to see um and he kind of like walks towards them but then keeps going along the shore 
Um, then Pat spots the movement back where they originally saw Bartholomew. And sure enough, giant crabs had arrived. Pinchers in the air. More than 40 mm. of them. And they have mm. evil faces. Uh, (laughs) they have have human-like expressions on their faces you've never even seen it Pat's like I didn't even know crabs had faces I thought it was just shells and legs and now these things have like evil coming from their eyes (laughs) that's hilarious I know yeah Uh, so as more of them pour out of the ocean they start to freeze like as soon as they hit like dry land they freeze and and Cliff's like wow it's like they're waiting for something and then appears the king crab. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Gosh, thank you. That king crab. What? A, what a fucking ass. Seriously. Yeah. So he's he's one point five times their size. Uh, he's clearly the most evil, um, just by the look of him. Um, and he controls the one, other crabs. He like um, you know weighs yeah. his pincher in one direction. Pincers. Pin- yeah. Do you say a pincer or pincher? I know it's spelled pincer. pincer. Pincer? I thought pincer. Okay, cool. Crab pincer. Well, he, you know, he waves his pincer in one direction. They, like, in military military formation, follow. Um, and, you know, Cliff and Pat are just watching this in, like, horror. And Cliff's like, oh, my God, I hope they don't smell us or sense us in any way. Get ready to run. Because they start kind of, like, moving towards them. And then all of a sudden they change direction. And they start heading towards something else. And in horror, Cliff and Pat realize... They're hunting Bartholomew. Oh. Pat's like, mm. oh my God, we need to yell out and warn him. Oh. And Cliff's like, no, he can't hear. He's, He's deaf. Of line. Exactly. Oh. So the crabs, these hundred hundred more crabs. Well done. Nice callback. Right? Right. Nice placement. Yeah. Right? You know? So they're all marching towards him in the moonlight. Um, he doesn't hear them. King Crab captures him, tears off his leg, oh. his, his uh, bum leg. Uh, they said... Hold on, I gotta get this little bit out. I gotta read this part. It's quite horrific. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, they're almost on him. Oh my god, the absence of Bartholomew's scream was the most horrific factor of all. Because he's mute. Cause he can't oh, scream he's either. Mute too? Yes, oh he's everything. Bartholomew's I know. Killer. Remember, because remember. <laughs> Remember, Mrs. Jones is like he's dumb and stupid. Yes, or whatever. yeah. She, she really reiterated that. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to make it very clear. Yeah. So King Crab pulls off his leg, throws it to the other crabs. Pulls off his other leg, pulls off his two arms, throws them to the crabs. The crabs are just like going fucking nuts. Uh, click, 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 click. All the you know crab noise, excited crab noises. Um, <laughs> and and then uh, King Crab just starts to stab the dismembered body. Oh. Uh, until he dies. Um, Only when all the flesh Mm. had gone was the crunching of bone audible to the watching humans. The giant crabs did not Mm. believe in waste. Yep. (laughs) That's the end of chapter five. Wow. Oh, wow. That's, wow. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so they did have sex. They did have sex. Uh, Yeah, they they have now seen the crabs. Um, You know, my main questions Mm. are, how is the war department connected to this? There's been some very, Mm. you know, serious foreshadowing, I think. Um, I also want to know, well, you said maybe I won't find out, like, more about Bartholomew. It sounds like maybe you know a little bit more about Bartholomew, Lindsay. I know a little okay. bit more about Bartholomew. Yeah. I guess my question was like how Bartholomew's been digging up in the um seaweed for three years. That's what Mrs. Jones said. And he has yet to oh. get eaten by giant crabs. Daniel. Daniel, do you know about Bartholomew? Bartholomew is not a person that I know. No. Okay. Uh, I guess you know Well, I mean we are we are in book one of the series. That's too. true. Maybe he comes back. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll never origin know. I guess, the yeah. <laughs> the origin of the crabs. I bet we find out all of Bartholomew's story. Find out that Bartholomew. The origin of the like, crabs. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a massive callback? That would kind of be That'd epic, be huge. though, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. I guess I'm just wondering, like, like, how has he been doing this for three years? And the one night that Cliff and Pat decide to go watch, you know, look out for the crabs is the night that they kill him. I mean, like, that's just shockingly coincidental. Well, <laughs> 
Quite. Yeah, I mean, it, it could just, it could be that it, that's the first night that they caught him. Maybe, like, because oh, it, maybe they've been chasing like him. He, right? Mm-hmm. Like, every night or yeah. something. Because doesn't he look pretty dang haggard? Oh, he's like, haggard. Really first shit, yeah. <laughs> so, like, maybe, you know. Maybe he, <gasps> he is looks the like way he is shit. because. <laughs> <laughs> they are not interested until tonight. Because <laughs> they knew they had an They could finally catch him. Maybe he's been worthy opponent this whole time. Uh, He's the elusive, yeah, only... the elusive Bartholomew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally. Oh, you know what? Other... I just burped. Sorry. What? Oh. <laughs> Another thing that I was thinking yeah. of is like it's interesting, like how important it is to like make this very clear parallel between the crabs and some kind of military army, like unit yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, because that's a repeated thing that like was in your piece, uh-huh. and then I know is at least in my section as well. Okay. So maybe the big so, reveal comes in the final third? No, I mean, I just think it's an interesting okay. thing that's, like, super important, I think, to understand yes. about these crabs. Yes, so do I. Yeah. Um, like, I don't think it's necessarily going to be, like, a surprise or something. Yeah. I just think it's... I don't yeah. know. I guess my only other question, you know, and you guys will answer this in, in your uh, episodes, is are there any more boners? <laughs> I know we have I know we have another sex scene, but are there any just like boners that just random happen? boners? Yeah, and that are I've got to a you've boner. Got a boner. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a boner. <laughs> I've got a boner. Well, I, can't I might have two boners. Oh. I might have two boners, but I certainly oh. have <laughs> <laughs> Well I can't wait. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so excited for these boners right now. Me too. Uh... Ah, All right. Yeah. Well, that is, uh, I guess, our episode. Yeah, right? yeah, that's it. Um, I guess we don't need to make predictions since the rest of us. You know, <laughs> those are yeah. Those are my pre- those are my questions know slash how predictions. The story yeah. ends. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you for listening, and please rate or review us at um, the I don't I I do. <laughs> iTunes? We're a real podcast. (laughs) We are real. And uh, be sure to tune in for the next episode where Lindsay reads the second third of Night of the Crabs. (laughs) I won't read it. I won't read the whole thing. Let me say that again. (laughs) Unlike how I might be inclined, I'm going (laughs) to. Be sure to stay tuned for the second episode where Lindsay recaps the second third of Night of the Crabs. Are you guys still there? <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Okay, All right. Bye. Thanks. thanks. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.